Hello and welcome to the latest in the series of third team webinars. Today I'm going to talk to you about tackling COVID-19 as a referee. I'm Nathan Sherrod, a resilience trainer and mental toughness practitioner, as well as being the managing director of the third team. To find out more about the third team and to find out about find out more about me head across to the third team website or take a look at our social media channels such as YouTube, LinkedIn and Facebook, Twitter and Instagram which you can see below. In the previous third team webinar I explained more about myself as the managing director and my refereeing career, about challenges that I came across and I told you more about the third team. You might want to head back and listen to that to find out more about me and about the third team. But please stick with us now as I talk to you about COVID-19 as a referee. I've compiled some facts about coronavirus, also known as COVID-19, and some very really important points to bear in mind. COVID-19 is an illness caused by a virus that can spread from person to person. You can become infected by coming into close contact with someone, roughly six feet or two arm lengths. And it primarily spreads from person to person. I'm sure you've heard all the politicians and everyone in power talking about how important it is to stay at home as much as possible. And that's a message that we should still consider. Of course, we must also try and do our exercises on a daily basis. And I'll come on to that later on in the webinar. If you must go out for things like shopping or to help an elderly person or neighbour, then try and stay at least six feet away from others and try to disinfect any items that you touch. Nobody's immune to COVID-19. We haven't got a vaccine yet. So everyone's at risk. And that means we must treat this with extra care and extra caution. The first point I want to talk about today is about how we maintain mental and physical health. It's very natural that a lot of us will have concerns over routines and diet because we're not in a normal time. We're not doing exercise in a normal period and we're not eating the same foods. There is also a critical importance when we think about our physical health and about how regularly we exercise. It's important that we take up whatever regular exercise time is allowed wherever we live, but also very important that we look after our physical health. We only get one body. Taking care of our mental health and keeping our minds occupied is crucially important for us when we are considering how we can stay well and happy during this period. It's very easy to slip off our usual routines because we're not doing the things that we normally do. At the present time, across the world, we're seeing significant message, me measures put into place, which will absolutely minimize the effect and the spread of coronavirus. But this unfortunately means that the majority of sport and action, including football, has been prohibited. The restrictions have got a huge impact on the emotional well-being of us referees, as well as the general public. Considering this, I've thought about the advice I could give you as to how you can best look after your mental and physical health during these difficult and uncertain times that we find ourselves in. One of the things I touched upon in the bullet points was routine. If you're unable to leave your home, the temptation to lie in when you're in bed in the morning and go to sleep much later at night is, is very, very easy. But you should look to avoid this and attempt to maintain as normal a sleeping pattern as possible because that's very healthy and it'll also help you adapt once these times are over. The next point I want to talk about is healthy eating. I totally understand that the temptation to reach for unhealthy snacks when your mind is bored is absolutely huge. It can really help to plan healthy meals for throughout the day. If possible, try and make them fresh and home cooked. If you can't cook or prepare meals during this period of isolation, 
then you might now have the perfect time to learn. If you get yourself onto YouTube or online generally, you'll find some fantastic recipes and video tutorials. Regular exercise is a really, really key point for us during this period of time. And by far and away, for me, it tops the list of, best, of the best ways to maintain good mental health. If you can go for a walk or a run and try to incorporate this into your daily routine, then you're going to be a lot better off. Additionally, it's very much possible to ex exercise within the confines of your own home, even without access to a home gym. There are endless numbers of resources available online and apps which can support you with regular access to fitness uh, plans. And there's also a fantastic resource which I found called the Nike Training App. This specializes in home-based workouts and most of them don't even require any equipment. This app includes yoga and Pilates. Many English county football associations are offering their referees guidance on how to keep themselves in good condition, as well as helping their fit officials to continue the development by sharing clips and laws of the game questions on their Hive platform. That's something that's really, really good as well to get involved with. Rehabilitation and recovery is something that is really, really important if you're injured or if you went into this lockdown period with an injury. Try to stay in constant dialogue with your physiotherapists or surgeons if you've had an invasive operation to understand the best approach with regards to your ongoing rehabilitation. But this period can also be used by officials who haven't missed any games through injuries but have been carrying knocks or, haven't, or have had long-term underlying injuries that they've not previously had the time to fully recover from. Similarly to more major injuries, dialogue with physiotherapists is important so that you can agree an individualized plan and enhance your recovery through that. I've talked about physical health and I think it's really, really important that within a combination of regular exercise and a healthy diet, that you try to restrict the alcohol that you're consuming. And of course, you're always best off avoiding smoking at any time. Try to spend as much time out in the fresh air as possible. And if you're concerned about your physical health, follow the latest local healthcare advice with regards to contacting your GP. Social interaction is something that's really, really important for our overall well-being. To reduce the chances of having to physically isolate completely, it is important that you maintain good contact with your friends and family if you can. Try to spend time in touch with close friends, but the way that you do this must also be in, in accordance with the latest government advice wherever you are. Try to make positive use of social media. Use messaging apps and apps such as WhatsApp to stay in touch. FaceTime and Zoom are also incredibly useful visual tools for a period where physical distancing is enforced. Your mental well-being is something which is seriously, seriously important. Exercises which help you relax, such as mindfulness, can be useful when looking to maintain good mental health. There are an abundance of resources online, as well as fantastic apps that you can download to your devices, such as Headspace. If you've never given mindfulness a try, but you've always wanted to, then this period of time could be the prime opportunity that you've been looking for. It is an incredibly effective way to manage the difficulties that you're facing, such as raise anxiety levels and the potential to become depressed. So let's hope that you can use those tools to keep that threat at bay. Now I've talked a little bit about activities and I think the importance of having regular access to leisure activities could not be emphasized enough. The restrictions on movement that we are currently facing and that are constantly increasing can provide some challenges to your participation. But once again, the situation that we find ourselves in may provide us with a fantastic opportunity to try something else that we've long wanted to. I have listed below some of the things that you might want to try and be inspired by. Remember to be part of a balanced routine because there's no shame in spending time watching your favorite box set on Netflix or Amazon Prime. Think about activities such as cooking, 
arts and crafts. Think about watching movies and TV shows, gaming, gardening, and walks, but also when you're thinking about walks, think about what the latest government advice is. If you've always wanted to learn a musical instrument, then this could be the perfect time to do so. Also think about what you're reading. And if you've ever wanted to write something, such as a short story or even a novel. There are an abundance of opportunities for personal development and professional development. This period may seem bleak, but it could provide a great opportunity for you to consider how you can develop both personally and professionally. If you've long held aspirations of starting your own business or writing that book that everybody tells you that you've got in you, then with a clear schedule, now could be the time to make that commitment. Additionally, now could also be a great time to explore opportunities for training or further education. There are fantastic bodies such as the Open University, which offers a range of distance learning opportunities, which can include an abundance of free online training modules. One thing that's crucially important is that referees maintain regular communication with key figures at their local county football association. Figures such as their referee development officer are key to keeping abreast of the messages being sent out by the National FA. Frequent telephone and email communications can be also a useful approach in minimising physical isolation. Keep your conversations interesting and fun where possible and appropriate. The use of WhatsApp groups can be really effective in maintaining the strong bonds between officials who are all in the same position of loving the game and greatly missing being out on the middle or running up and down that line. If you're concerned about any mental health issue that you may have or any of your colleagues may have, then maybe try and speak with family or friends of the person or yourself. If you know a mental health first aider, that could be an ideal person to mediate. Seeking out expert advice from your GP is always the most highly recommended thing to do with mental health challenges. Remaining in a positive headspace is a really, really important tool for trying to get through this very difficult period. You've got to try not to put yourself under any undue pressure or wallow in any self-pity. You must also try to commit to making a connection with people who are important to you and making time to laugh. As it goes without saying, this can really, really lift your mood. Make sure that what you're putting into your body is really good for you. So now I'm talking about foods and other things. But you should also consider how you could use this time to educate yourself, as I touched on before. As referees, alongside our colleagues the world over, we are largely redundant and inactive at the present time. But that love and enjoyment for refereeing that we have is a hard thirst to quench. And unfortunately, this can lead to the positive headspace that most referees usually enjoy becoming diminished. When you begin to feel low, you have two options. You can either continue what you're doing or try new things in an effort to pick yourself back up. Sometimes the latter is easier said than done. So I've got a few things that you can do when you begin to feel a dip in your mood, which will hopefully bring back a positive headspace for yourself. The first thing I would always say is try not to be so hard on yourself. As officials, we tend to apply a lot of pressure upon ourselves when we're out in the middle. And whilst it's advantageous to strive for the highest standards when we're refereeing on a weekly basis, there comes a time when relaxing, reflecting and recognising all the positives in our lives holds a much higher value. When we begin to feel a dip in our mood, we should try this. We should try to consider that the things within our lives for which we are grateful we should also try to evaluate, as opposed to thinking about what we don't have. But most importantly, we should give ourselves a break. Feeling good about who we are right now at this moment can be a fantastic thing for us mentally. Remember, happiness is a choice. The second point is about staying active. One of the best ways that you can lift your mood when you're having a tough day or you're feeling overwhelmed is to get out and do some exercise. You should try to go for a run or ride on your bike to stay match fit, but, doesn't, but don't feel like you have to do such a high intensity form of exercise. Simply going for a stroll 
is beneficial. Don't allow yourself to just mope around at home or stay in bed feeling self-pity. Make it a goal to get up and get moving regularly so you can remain at your physical level. Another thing which you need to do is try to connect with the people that you love. Friends and family can be just what you need when you're feeling low. And despite being unable to be physically with them, you can still feel connected to them by picking up the phone and calling, or even better, having a video call to see their face. Sometimes a situation is as simple as needing a friend to be confident and to share your problems and to look at them from a different perspective. As I touched on, making time to laugh is something that's very, very important. We all know that life can be taken too seriously at times, but we must look at things in, in perspective. How you feel at any one moment in time, such as when you've made an error during refereeing a game, is only one small moment out of the many thousands that you'll experience throughout your lifetime. Bear in mind that feelings of sadness, pain, disappointment are temporary, and you may want to lift your mood by watching your favorite comedy, film, or video online. Eating nutritiously is something that is unbelievably good for us. It will surely come as no surprise that when people are in a negative headspace, such as a referee at the end of a highly challenging fixture, they're more likely to make unhealthy food choices. Your body will thank you if you choose not to consume junk food. You have many, many healthy alternatives, such as vegetables, fruits, nuts, and seeds. Eating healthy snacks can lift your mood and fill your body with the nutrients that it really, really needs. Try to read a book or challenge your mind. The power of words cannot be underestimated. They can lift your spirits when your mood is low. As referees, we can go online and search for activities to do with officiating, as well as taking a look at the laws of the game and refreshing our knowledge of those. You might want to watch a video or listen to a podcast featuring a famous and inspiring leader in officiating whom you admire. Conversely, you may decide to take your mind away from the whistle completely and read a thoughtful or inspiring book. My final tip is all about trying to work productively. Simply taking your mind off negative thoughts when you're having a bad day can be done by working. Be it your job, doing work around the home, or working on a project that you're passionate about, such as learning a particular point of law that you were weaker on last season. Getting work done will help you feel productive and give you a real sense of achievement which will also help to free up your mind. No, football does not mean that your development must stop. The thoughts of disappointment that referees have had the world over is something that I'm sure we can all empathize with. The journey of setting goals and how to set out on that is something that I'm gonna to touch on upon this point. Once you've set yourself away with a goal, sustaining it is the next challenge that you'll face. And I want to talk a little bit more about that as well. There's absolutely no doubt that over the past few months, we've experienced very, very tough times as referees. We've had our season suddenly ground to a halt as a consequence of COVID-19. I've been in contact with many, many refereeing colleagues, and they've been telling me things such as, how they've been working extremely hard all season to get promoted all the way back into their pre-season and about how they'd hoped to finish their season strongly. A lot of them felt that they were on good runs of performances and they were regularly obtaining high marks. Others have talked about the physical effort that they've put in and how it's exceptionally disappointing that this season may count for nothing. And others who have been in charge of cup finals whether it be at county level or league level over the season they've missed out on those opportunities to referee those marquee fixtures many referees also talk about the amount of time they've committed as well as effort to improving their refereeing over the course of the past 12 months and how they fear that the extended period of time away from physical training and applying refereeing skills on a match day will hinder them in a long run Another referee told me how they spent so much of the year out officiating over weekends and through the week and how they're finding it so tough to fulfil themselves in the freshly vacated time that they now have on their hands. 
I have to say that the sadness and disappointment that referees are experiencing at the present time is very much understandable to me. Whilst football's not being played, officials can concentrate on matters that help them to maintain their referee mindset over the enforced break. This also allows them to analyse what may have been an imperfection in their skill set over the course of the previous season so that they can make changes and improvements prior to the recommencement of football. A great first step for officials is to set small goals for each session. The way that officials can dedicate their development and increase their ability and focus to break down the areas which they're looking to improve on into more manageable chunks is really, really important because quick wins can lift your mood and give you an increased sense of confidence. This will make your refereeing development much easier as when you reach the end of each chunk of development, you'll feel a greater sense of achievement and that you are continuing to head in the right direction. This means that you can go from chunk to chunk feeling motivated and you're more able to make the most of this development opportunity. Once you've committed to your plan of self-improvement, you should try to ask yourself which of your technical skills are most in need of improvement. Additionally, try to think about your fitness plan. There is nothing wrong with questioning and being accountable to yourself either and thinking, what are the mental skills that I can develop to improve my future performances out in the middle? It is crucial to bear in mind that with each step in the right direction, when you start to see and feel the benefits of the improvement in your training and technique, your confidence will grow. When setting goals, you should firstly look to set long-term goals as an assessment of where you'd like to be by the end of next season, whenever that may begin. And from there, you can break your development down into chunks of progress within that time frame. Secondly, you can analyse your observations and performance statistics from the current season to establish where you are now, and that can form your starting point. Leading on from your starting point, this will allow you to distinguish technical areas or performance statistics which you will need to improve. These will comprise your objectives. Everyone learns and develops in different ways and at different paces. It may help certain referees to remain focused and motivated by using specific goal setting, goal setting schemes such as the SMART goals. Finally, you can attain a higher level of success within your development program by regularly keeping track of, assessing and adjusting your goals on the basis of your progress over the weeks, months and the wider season. Putting goals in place is one thing. However, the most crucial element of setting goals is achieving them. It is important to instill a regular program which will lead to an enhancement in your physical condition and your mentality. Try to have three manageable goals which underpin each of your development sessions. Consider how you can improve one of your mental, physical and technical skills within each session that you do. We are currently experiencing an incredibly difficult period of time for those of us who love refereeing, miss our colleagues whom we count as friends and miss the buzz of being out, on the middle, out in the middle on a match day. We should make it our aim to reflect upon this break as a beneficial chapter that we've made the most of once the season resumes. Setting goals can boost our mental toughness, resilience and our physical condition, as well as giving us greater confidence. So in summary, let's remember that we can take good care of ourselves mentally and physically, despite the restrictions that are currently in place right now. We have a multitude of options when looking to maintain a positive headspace and we can explore them all because this is not a short period of time that we are facing right now. This will go on for a rather prolonged period so we have plenty of time. The final point is also to bear in mind that a lack of football is not the end of your hopes of developing your refereeing. As I said at the beginning, I'm Nathan Sherrod. I'm the managing director of the third team. I'm a resilience trainer and mental toughness practitioner. If you have any questions about the work I do or about today's webinar, then visit the thirdteam.co.uk.
or send me an email at info at the third team .uk. Remember, you can engage with the third team on YouTube, LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And on all of those platforms, we have our own pages. Thank you very much for listening. And remember to stay safe and take care. Goodbye.